So this side is a little bit shorter, so I'm doing it a little bit closer. I'm doing it about an inch away. One, two, three. And we'll flip over here. Folding that canvas. Yeah, I kind of said before doing it about halfway up the piece of the wood. I kind of lied. I'm doing it at the edge. Do it at the edge and bring it over. There we go. And that's wrinkling there. And I'm not enjoying that, so I'm actually going to just pull this on that side a little bit. Just means I got too much slack going there. That's a lot better. You're going to notice when you're doing this top edge, you're going to get a lot of wrinkling there. That's going to be fixed when you tighten this edge, right? So right now we're doing the middle. We're slowly working our ways to the corner. So just don't get freaked out. It's okay. So now I did this side. Now I'm going to do this side to all of them. It's like it's a specific formula on how to do it. Oh, see, I just ripped it a little bit. Give yourself enough slack. If you can't get it all the way to the edge, that's okay. It's still tight. I just kind of sneak it in there. So now, flip it over. I'm going to do this side. And when I'm doing that, especially when I don't have enough slack and I think I'm going to overstretch it, I'm not necessarily pulling anymore. I'm just kind of letting gravity take it and I'm almost letting up just a little bit. You know, I can see that the canvas is starting to stretch a little bit too much where I am. So I'm like, okay, we'll just get it over the edge, staple it, it'll be fine. So for this side, that side, so now this side, obviously it doesn't matter which way we start with, as long as we do both. And this is the reason, like the reason we do this and not in a circle. It's because if you do it in a circle, it's not gonna pull in the proper ways. So we're pulling this way and this way and this way and this way to get a square, basically, right? So we can kind of take out this square. If we do it in a circle and go here and here and here and here, it's not gonna pull in the right directions. It's more like a whirlpool rather than like you know, almost like plaid, right? You wanna think of it more that way, if that makes sense. And if you don't care why, just do it because I said so. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> I promise you, if you do it the other way, it won't work. So get it over the edge. Once I have it to that edge, I'm just pulling it over. I'm not like pulling it this way. I'm just pulling it down. So I'm going to do that again. All right. And two more times around. So we're going to do this side and then these sides. So these sides, we've got just one more. And these sides, we got about two more. So I'm actually just going to do kind of this whole strip. So I'm going to pull just to the edge there. And I ran out of staples. That is going to happen. I honestly can't remember in university how many staples they told us to put in. I'm pretty sure I do way more than they ever taught us to put in. But I'd rather have a little too many than a little too less. Um, so, sorry professor, I use way too many staples. But it works. It does. Makes it a lot tighter of a canvas. Oh, I take these shut. Okay. I guess I didn't go over what staples I use. T fifty is three eighths, ten millimeter. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't super matter. It's just the kind I use. I don't know. 
So it was bunching up a lot here. So if I pull it over here, it's not bunching up as much, so it won't cause as many problems. So pull it over, have that there. One, two, just for the smaller area, and then I'll do three over here. It's not an exact science, it's just kind of what I feel. I'm also not going directly up to this corner because we do do corners different. Corners are different. So I did that side, now I'm gonna do this side. And I do not have a lot of slack there. Give yourself enough slack. So when I don't have enough slack, just kind of sneak a bit. I'm gonna do extra staples there because it is right on the edge. That's good, we can check in too. We're starting to sound like a really good drum. The only places that are not are the corners. Obviously, we haven't done that yet. You know, it's starting to sound really good. So I know even though these are kind of close to the edge, they're not as tight, we're still looking pretty. And now we'll do, what side did I just do? This side, this side. I don't like sitting I tried it. I didn't like it. Okay. So I'm also just doing two because, again, I don't want to go right into that corner. And we're going to do, yeah, we did that side. So we're going to do this final side and then the corners. One, two, and pull this corner not too tight or else I will rip it. And sometimes if I have not enough slack and it's looking like it might rip, just give it a couple extra staples. Just, just staple it in there. Whew, don't do what I almost did. Opposite. Oh, this is really, really not a lot of slack here. So this one I really don't have a lot of slack. So I'm just gonna staple those down just so it doesn't accidentally rip. And last side before corners. Corners are actually really fun. People in university did not like them, but I was always really good at them. And they made sense to me, so I will try and explain them the way that they make sense to me. So, for looking at the corner, I make all the corners face the same direction. Some people do it, these two face this way, those two face this way. A lot of people do it differently. I just do it is, they go all the same direction. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Makes sense to me. If we do have this big gap here, I do put one staple in it. So when we're at the time for corners, I'm just gonna put that extra staple in just to make it really tight over here. Because corners, the reason people don't like corners is because they are hard to get tight, right? So when we're at the time of corners, that's when I'll put the extra staple in. Don't do it when you're doing the circle because we wanna pull that last little bit at the end, not, not when we're going around. It'll make a difference, I promise. So I'm just gonna pull that a little bit. So now I've got about an inch off of the corner. So if you think of like the corner as like a square here, I still got that space left to do. So this is kind of already wanting to fall this way. So I'm gonna pull it tight here. I don't know where the camera is that you can see. Um, I'm gonna pull it tight over here and then bring it 
around, right? So we're gonna make it flush on both sides and then pull it up and down, right? So we've got a nice tight corner there. I'll staple it there. This is loose up here. So I'll staple that down and down, right? So we can see there that we've got it pulled up and across and so we've got it tight in there. But by putting those extra staples in, you can almost drum that corner, right? So we've got it nice and tight. And I'll show you guys. So we've got it nice and tight there, right? Um, the corners are about the only thing that you can do in a circle because um, they're not gonna pull across the whole canvas, it's fine. Um, this one I already got pretty tight over here. This one I'm just gonna do a little one extra. A lot of it is just kind of intuitive after a while. You know, if you feel like you need an extra one, just put an extra one. It's not a big deal. I don't know. I might actually just do it this way because it really does not want to go the other way. So I'll pull it together and in and pull it down. So I've got it tight there. And then this last little bit, I, that's not pulling anything, that's not doing anything other than just holding it down and out of the way. So because we did these two facing each other, we're gonna do the same thing over here. Just how this one wanted to be. That's okay, it can be different. I'm just gonna pull that little extra bit, one staple. And pulling this little extra bit at the corners, that's what makes the corners easier to do. Um, I don't fully remember how they had us do it in university. I've definitely tweaked it over the time of me doing it, but they had us like pull this whole corner and that's what made it hard. So just doing that, you don't get the corners as tight as the rest of the canvas, but it's fine, right? No one's gonna be drumming the corner of your canvas. Don't touch other people's canvases, by the way. I'm putting that out there. <sighs> but so we're, we pull it together like that, pull it in, because I'm going to go in on this side, pull it tight there. This is just extra, so I'm just going to lay that flat and out of the way. Sometimes I even, if we have like a lot in this corner, just cut it off. No one's going to look at the back of your canvas. It's fine. And if they do, well, you know what? It's authentic. There you go got a handmade quality to it. <laughs> and the last corner, I'm just gonna pull that one, pull this side just a touch. All right, we're doing it this way. Whew, I already forgot, okay. I'm gonna pull that corner in, staple it down. Almost reminds me of wrapping presents. I'm a lot better at wrapping canvases than I am presents, though. There we go. And if this would get in the way, I'd sometimes cut it off, tuck it in, whatever. Yeah, and that's, that's how I do it. So now we can see on this side, we've got a nice tight drum everywhere, right? Even in those corners, it's nice and tight. Gesso, so this is raw canvas. You do have to gesso this one. I don't, doing the pre-prime gesso canvas is a lot harder. Um, it doesn't have as much give to it and you don't get as tight of a canvas I find. Um, so just do, you know, two, three coats of can, or um, gesso on this, you'll be good to go. Um, that'll tighten it up that last little bit and it'll be, it'll be awesome. Um, after I gesso, I like to sand it a little bit because it's sometimes a little gritty. Just give it a quick little sand with some sandpaper. It's all good. But now we can see, you know, with that bounce there, why that slope inwards was so important. Because if I, if not, when I'm painting here, I would be able to feel the edge of that wood. It would cause a crease. And that's just, it's not ideal, right? Yeah. Do we have any questions? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was also taught how to do gesso. I did not bring my stuff to do gesso, mainly because I have to transport these after this. 
Uh, and it's a lot easier to transport it without gessoing it, because uh, if this gets some dirt on it, it's fine. It's going to get gessoed. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, the gesso I use is by Golden. I also use the Lakotex one. It's whatever's on sale. Um, I don't quite do the basic gesso, um, just because I like it to have that little bit more high quality, though I haven't found a difference between them. This is, I buy it by the gallon, um, because it's cheaper, because I'm making like 15 of these at the same time. Um, I usually put it in a little mason jar, so I can pour it on. Uh, it's a lot easier than dealing with a gallon. They used to make these gallons and jugs. You could pour it. That was amazing. Do that again. Um, if they're watching, do it again. I liked it. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> how you gesso a canvas is you'd pour gesso all along the side of here. You take a, a sponge brush and you'd push it across. It's not going to be perfect. That's okay. You push it all the way across. Let that dry. And then you do it to the other side. Sometimes I do a third if it's just not covering in certain spots. Um, yeah, you just push it. Yeah, really easy. Um, I don't brush it on. I, it, I don't know why. I don't have a why. I just know that that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I have a little bit, like if I'm pushing the gesso here and I've got a little bit extra on my sponge brush, I like go and do the corners and, you know, stripe it across here and, you know, you cover the whole canvas. Not that first pass. I'm not as worried about it the first pass. Second pass, definitely cover all those spots that you didn't. Um, the sides, I have a love-hate relationship with the sides. I definitely do gesso them just with like a little brush. I just go and gesso them, and then I just put a little color in it. I hate the edges. Um, I, they're the bane of my existence. Um, yeah, I do. I just do one coat of gesso on them. They're not that big of a deal. Now, if you're, if you're like doing a painting that wraps, and you're like doing details on the edge, I'd care a little bit more about them. I don't. I just put like a color on the sides, and sometimes I leave them a little bit imperfect on purpose. I like that look. That's what I like doing. Do whatever works for you. I just do a little brush. I just bring it to the edge here, and I just do a little brush because I got it already in a jar. It just makes my job good. Um, if you're ever finding um, uh, your canvases that have been in storage or when you stretch it, it just it's still just a little bit loose for your liking, or you have a painted finished piece that over time has just kind of laxed a little bit, there's a trick to that. You flip it over. Obviously, if this is a finished painting, put it down on something nice. You know, don't wreck it. Cover the back in water. Don't like drench it in water, but make it, make it good and moist. Like have a mister or just kind of rub it in. Make it wet. When it dries, it'll tighten just that little bit. I have saved finished paintings doing this. Um, I've even come into the gallery. Flo's seen me do this. I've come into the gallery and I'll be like, this one's really loose. I took it down, put water on it, and I said, put it up tomorrow. And uh, don't do that to your gallery, <laughs> by the way. She's just super nice about it. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's a way to, to save that, that canvas. Um, it'll just loosen over time. You just tighten it up a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>